according to Jenna. So she, she's running the show here. Um, so as we as we said before, when when our trainers are here, it's cool to interact. If they say something that awes you or whatever, but be be interactive. We are Facebook Live, so we have a third member of the audience. There's usually hundreds, if not thousands, of views on these videos. And so it gives us an opportunity to get our message out and the message of the speaker. Uh, and I think it's been and proven to be a great tool. Uh, so as far as Howard goes, I, I've not met Howard, but I, I've known Howard by reputation. Uh, there's a number of people that have, have, have told me about his talk and his training. And actually, as I started to look into him, to do a little bit of research, uh, the thing that's jumped out at me the most was the fact that he is actually documented by the Guinness World Book of World Records of, of reading 25,000 words a minute. Now, I don't know if you understand how fast that is, but I, and he can probably tell you how fast it really is, but uh, frankly, I... Uh, there's a video here. Oh, there's a video. Okay, so he'll, 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 ta he'll uh, demonstrate this in a second. But all I can tell you is I took a speed reading class. I was telling Howard this, and... And I went from 300 words a minute to 1,200 words a minute, and I was the, the prime student in the class in that particular thing. And I had to break through a number of walls in my own mental thinking process to get to there. I can't even imagine how to get to 25,000 words a minute. And I know Howard focuses a lot on uh, brain and learning and learning techniques, and I've read a lot of his stuff, and he's been recognized in a lot of areas. So. I don't think I have to do a whole lot more introduction of Howard. If you look at our meetup site, you'll see his credentials. Awesome, awesome opportunity for us here to, to learn some things that hopefully that will benefit us going forward. So with that, Howard Bird. Thank you. Before I start, I have a couple of gifts for everybody. Uh, I am the uh, program director for my Rotary Club. If any of you would like to speak at the E-Club of North Texas, let me know, give me your card at the end. And I have a TV show on the UAN network, which is the Christian network. And if you'd like to be a guest on my show, let me know that before I leave also. And there's no charge. It's a three-camera shoot in a professional studio. You could use it on your website. You could use it on LinkedIn, Facebook. And it's just my way of saying thank you. And I always like to have interesting people to talk to. So there's no charge for any of that. Uh, I had a bio, but I'm going to skip over. I want to spend more time teaching today than talking about myself. I have one more gift. If you text 214-462-3355, and I will have that up longer when I get to the speed reading slide because it stays up for a while, and you write in the word rotary because I do a lot of rotary presentations, you'll get uh, a free newsletter, and I also do free consultation if you're interested. And there's no charge for that. Would you agree that uh, modeling successful people to become successful is a good strategy? Yes. So, yes, there you go. <laughs> You're right. So if Bill Gates would teach you business, that would be phenomenal. And if, if Michael Jordan would show you how to throw a basketball, that would be great. Or if my friend Peyton Manning would show you how to throw a football, that would be great. Well, Bill Michael and Peyton couldn't make it. <laughs> but, you know, but I'm here, and I'm considered the best in the world at what I do. And I had youngsters as young as 11 in college getting A's in as little as a week. And the same skill that I teach to the youngsters, business people used to stay on top of data, and seniors used to stay mentally fit. We were kind of talking about that at the table as you get older. They found reading was the best way to keep your brain young. So let's get ready for a life-changing experience. Would you like to learn faster? Yes. Yes. Say yes. Would you like to be more productive? Yes. Say yes. And would you like to have more time for the things you love? Say yes. yes. Well, that's what we're going to learn to do today because I'm going to teach you five skills. I'm going to get you to read 10 to 20% faster. I'm going to show you how to understand what you read, how to remember what you read. We'll do a little math magic and some emotional intelligence skills. So by the time I'm done, you'll have five solid skills that you could take with you. We'll have fun doing it, and you may want to take notes. A lot of you are grandparents, have nieces, nephews, or some of you are younger, you might have kids like this. And what I teach is very helpful for them. Right now there's a 50% dropout rate in four-year college and 70% in two-year college. And the ones who don't drop out take six years to do four-year degrees on average. So uh, big, big problem. And that's the smart people who get to college, not, not the ones who dropped out of high school. Time will fly, we'll make it fast. 
One of my kids, Micah, looks like a little boy just past the bar at 19 in California. Was that a fluke? His brother's 22 and he's an attorney and a flight instructor. His 15-year-old sister's in her first year of law school, will be the youngest person in history to pass the bar in California. And the second youngest would be his other brother who's 17 and his first year of law school. It was all the Micah Stanley family. I was very proud of what they were able to accomplish because I unlocked the secret to super fast learning because I also struggled with books and magazines and mail and email like everyone else. Well, you may have noticed I don't have a native Texas accent. And uh, no one said, what part of Texas did you grow up in? Well, I grew up in South Brooklyn in the projects and it was a bad, you probably read Linden Houses, really bad. I mean, really bad. We moved when they raped an 88-year-old man. So when I say it was bad, it was bad. I was, I've had knives to my throat. I was beaten with baseball bats. My dad was pistol whipped. It's a really scary place to grow up. Well, I found one safe place. The library. The gang kids treat the libraries like vampires treat churches. They would not be quite dead in a library. I read a lot. I was reading the theory of relativity when I was eight. And when I was 11, I had college reading. I went to college at 17 to major in biology at the State University of New York Binghamton, which is still in the top 10 public colleges in the country. In my junior year, I got interested in the brain and how it works. And I said to the dean, I want to have two majors, psych and bio. He said, you can't. You're a junior. You haven't had any courses in psychology. You'll have to do the four-year program in one year and take six courses at the same time in science with two labs, and frankly, you're not smart enough. So basically, 18 credits of science a term. I also had three part-time jobs, which made it a little more <laughs> challenging. And I decided I could do it, because they don't teach learning in school. They tell you what to learn and why to learn and what will happen when you don't learn. But they don't tell you why you hear a song once on the radio, and you sing it your entire life effortlessly. And then you read a book like The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and the next day, you don't know what any of the habits are, and you're lucky to your name. Remember the author in the name of the book. So there had to be a way to learn things that matter the way we were learning songs, and there was. I got up to 80 pages a minute. I did a four-year psych program in a year, and I took the GRE in biology, and I reviewed 48 books in three nights, like biochemistry, cell physiology, genetics, plant systematics. It was 300 questions I got to read wrong, and I was in the... 99th percentile in the world for biologists for that year. And I, that's exciting, but more exciting is I found I could teach it. And I owned a school, and we had a group of kids, 11 to 15, do a 30-chapter book in lifelong the men, developmental psychology, which is a sophomore college course. And in one week, they finished the book, took the clap, and 15 out of 18 passed the course with the college credit in a week. So that, to me, is more important. Uh, Guinness was nice, it gets people's attention, but doing the kind of things like I did with the Micah family, the Stanley family, it shows that you can change people's lives, much more important than showing you can do something nobody else can do because it doesn't help anyone or make a difference. The program made <clears throat> $65 million with Nightingale Conant. I didn't get the $65 million or I'd be in Fiji now on my private island on Skype. But uh, it was nice getting it. We tested it. We did a double-blind study using the Nelson-Denny, which is a standardized test. And everyone in the study, 100 people, doubled or quadrupled in four hours with no loss of comprehension. I was very excited by that. Uh, I've been on over 1,100 shows. I helped launch Comedy Central in the mid-'80s with uh, Dennis Leary. I was on his first show, he was their first star, I was on 7 out of 14 shows. Kind of fun, we were at the Jackie Gleason studio where oh, they yeah. filmed The Honeymooners. Right. And I, it was, they had all the motifs on the wall, it was really exciting. And, and his friend Richard Belzer hung out with us. We, I got to know Richard Belzer and, and Dennis really well. And then uh, John Stewart had me on as his first guest on television. So I helped launch Comedy Central and I've been on all, over nine times. Uh, there's a reason most biologists don't get to do comedy, and I, would you like to see why? <laughs> Mushroom walks in a bar. Bartender says, get out, we don't serve your kind. Mushroom says, why not, I'm a fun guy. 
And, 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 that, and, that's, and that's why most biologists don't do comedy, okay? You may have seen me with Justin Timberlake and Peyton and Amy Sedaris as the Sony spokesperson. And this is me reading the healthcare bill on Cavuto. It was this many pages, that was the end. And I read it in 50 minutes and did an analysis. And it was good enough that Nancy Pelosi called the studio to complain because I found things they hid in the bill that weren't supposed to be found. It was 15 minutes after the bill was printed, so they thought they had a little more time than that. But that was another story. I told my wife, I said, if there's guys with black sunglasses and helicopters flying over the house, let me know I'm not coming home. <laughs> so, while viewing this, think about it could help you and your family succeed. We'll start with the first problem, information overload. More is printed in a week than all the human history through the year 1800. That's a fact. And every six months, it doubles. The average person reads about 200 words a minute. The range of normal is 150 to 400 words a minute, but most people are in year 200. Not anywhere near enough to stay on top of information. And all that's now accessible online, so we literally drown in data between the laws, the rules, the business skills you need to know, the core skill you need to know in your own industry. <clears throat> it takes a lot of time that you don't get compensated for. But without that information, you can't perform your product or service. So let me show you how to read faster. And there's that number for the free gift. If you would like, I don't think my this thing's bouncing off. So if you text two one four four six two thirty three fifty five, this would be up for a moment because I'm going to teach you a skill. And just put in the word Rotary, you'll get the gift. Now, when you go home, get a book you've read, nonfiction, one you understand. You want to make sure the only thing that might confuse you is your speed, not the book and read for a minute with a timer. And when the minute's up, mark off how far you went. So now you know how far you read in a minute, the way you normally read. We have an assessment. Go to the second chapter and use your hand and go from the left to the right margin, eyes following your hand, and the secret is as fast as you could comprehend. And keep speeding up till you don't comprehend. So you actually say, now it's too fast. That's the point where you went too fast. Slow down just enough that your comprehension comes back, going all the way across and not down the middle for five minutes. And when you've done that, go back to the first chapter where you initially tested your speed. And do it a second time with your hand, and you'll see you go 10 to 20% further than you did the first time, just doing that one change. And please share this with people you care about, especially the youngsters that you know. And uh, they're struggling, and they really need this, so make sure that they know about it. This is one of my oldest students, Ruth. Ruth Lubin was the little old lady from Pasadena. She lived in Pasadena, and she was a belly dance instructor at 84 on cruise ships. Coolest, coolest lady, Kev. She, her hobby was downhill skiing and rollerblading with her 88-year-old boyfriend. She was just the coolest lady you could ever want to know. <clears throat> she took my course and called me up and said she read three books in three hours the day after I taught her, which blew my mind. I, I didn't know if she'd even learn it. It's, so, so, yeah, my oldest student ended up being 92, and they doubled. And she said, I don't know how much time I have left, but there's so much more I want to learn. And so it really made me, my wife went with me the next time I went to California and we, we took her to the comedy club on Hyatt so we could spend some time with her. And it was really nice. Now, Martin Lawrence, unfortunately, was the headliner and she was in a different generation. So every other word out of his mouth, she was like, oh my God. <laughs> he wasn't prepared for that. But it was, but then she fell asleep, so it was okay. <laughs> Yeah, by 10 o'clock, she was out. <laughs> and the latest studies show that the best way to stay fit and keep your memory as you get older is to read every day. There's two studies, the Baltimore and Seattle Longitudinal Studies on Aging, which I read 20 years ago in 90 seconds on a TV show. So I do remember them, and they said that people in their 80s that were readers had a much better memory and much less of a problem with Alzheimer's and dementia. It kept the healthy part of the brain healthy longer. So 
good thing to know because we were talking about some of those things. You'll find that as a help. And you'd be good for my TV show, by the way, because I know what you do, and that would be a good subject to have on. I'm just That's why I talk to people. I try to get to know what people do and understand them. Would you agree that comprehension is very much more important than speed? In fact, speed reading didn't work. Uh, I remember 20, 25 years ago, uh, I was with Dick Cavett, and Dick said he had interviewed Woody Allen. I, I was told I sound like a, a little side story. I was on a radio show, and they said, you know, you sound just like Woody Allen. So I, I said, okay. Sun Yi, please be patient. Daddy will be home soon. So, <laughs> and the guy looked at me and said, hey, so I'm not the bad one here. <laughs> so anyway, he, Woody, Woody Allen... Uh, told him he took Evelyn Woods, he read War and Peace in five minutes, which is quite an achievement. It's like this many pages. He said, that's amazing. What do you remember? He said, it's about the Russian Revolution. That's all I remember. And that was really what happened when people were speed reading. They didn't learn anything. They got the big picture. Yeah, it's about genetics. Okay. This is a chemistry book. And that was about what you took away. And if you slow down to learn a word or a name or a number, or you lost your speed. You went right back where you were. So people really, really hated it. Well, I fixed it. The guy who won't ever in woods in the 60s paid me 5000 to train his son to speed read. And I'm going to show you for free the secret to comprehending at high speed. And it's called schema. Schema is your map. It's what you know already. So if you're reading, the man drank a glass of water, you'll go, wait, what's a man? What's a glass? What's water? Because you know what those words are, you can read them. If I said, look at the Agilius Phoenicius, which is a word, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's not in your schema. It's confusing. Here's a passage that has no schema. Watch how hard it is to understand. On the next slide, I have a one-word title that has schema, and it makes the total difference between understanding and not. Watch. This is an easy thing to do. You can always do this at home, but could go somewhere else if it's necessary. We're overdoing it. This is a major mistake. It could cost you quite a bit of money. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You don't know what it's about. But now you do. Laundry. This is an easy thing to do. You could always do this at home, but can go somewhere else if it's necessary. And there's no confusion. So what I'm teaching people is not just to go quicker, but use the psychology of reading. If you know where the schema is and how to find it two, three, four times faster, you don't just read quicker, you actually understand better at the higher speed than at the lower speed. So you can read biochemistry and genetics and calculus and actually learn something, a business book, which was not possible in the past. In fact, um, can I do a little enrichment, something a little sure, beyond? absolutely. There's only five things you need to learn. If you learn these five things, you get an, you'll get be equivalent of an A in a school situation. You need to learn the words, the vocabulary, names, any number date statistical formula, the five main ideas in every section, and the answers to questions. If you know every word, every name, every number, the five big takeaways in every section and subsection, and it answers every other question, what else would you need to know? Context. That's it. Oh, you, it, it, that comes with the schema. Okay. So, and then I have a memory system for speed learning, like you said, learning Spanish. It, it, it's very effective for that. So I just thought I'd go off a little on that. I thought it would help. Now, in your businesses, what are you doing when you communicate with people to make sure you're on their map? Remember, you have specialized vocabulary they don't have. So a word like a Julius Phoenicius means a lot to a biologist, but not to anybody else. And if you're using words like that that make sense to you but not to your client, like doctors when they tell you you got to... Uh, you got laryngitis, like what's that? You know, they're using big words that don't register in your map and you think you're gonna, you're gonna die and it's, it's a scrape. You know, it's no big deal. And so you wanna make sure when we communicate with other people, it's on their map and not just on your own. And you could use this to cut your learning time in half and fun, find the ideal solution. You can stay on top of business skills, which are very important in business, as you know. It's not just the business. The real business is marketing. I don't care what business you're in. If you don't have sales, you don't have a business. And so you always have to think that you're in the speed reading business. You're in the art business. Or you have no business. It's a hobby. And even a hobby has overhead. 
and you want to have more time, be more productive and profitable. I've read about 30,000 books. I like to think if I was a total idiot, I'd be well informed. And every, everything you do is based on only one thing, what you know. Every decision you make, every problem you solve, is based connecting dots about something you know and need to do something with. And the more dots you have, the more solutions you can find. So if this doesn't work, well, there's another thing I could do. I don't remember, I saw someone else did this. And, and you find the one that will work, where everyone else is like, what do I do now? I've run out of dots. There's nothing left I can do. And that's a problem a lot of people have today. I watch the news and it breaks my heart when I read about coal miners. Being a coal miner in West Virginia is like selling eight-track tapes. There's a reason you don't make a good living selling eight-track tapes. Nobody uses them. The, the reason they're out of business, by the way, is because in, in the West, they, they have coal where one person could do the work of 30 coal miners because they strip mine. And so they could have one person doing 30 people work or 30 people getting paid to do the work. It's not rocket science. Your job's over. And the only thing you can do now is learn a new skill or feel bad about the fact the job is over. If you make records or eight tracks, you're in a troubled industry right now. But there's still opportunities. But you have to be able to learn things fast. And instead of complaining about what isn't happening, you look at where the opportunities are and you go where the light is. It's like the old moron and he's searching for his wallet under the street light and someone stops and helps him. And after an hour, they can't find it. He says, well, where'd you drop it? He's down the street. So why are you looking here? Says, the light's better. <laughs> you know, you know, and that's what people are doing. They're, they're looking in the wrong place. The solution is there, but they're looking where it's convenient and easy instead of doing what they need. Learn something new, and you'll get back on your feet. You can't do what doesn't work anymore. And what we did 10 years ago doesn't work today. And I'll guarantee you what's working today won't work in 10 years from now. Only people who are going to stay successful are people who learn and stay on top of what's going on. The rest of them are like, what, what's a cell phone? You see that a lot. You know, how, do you, how does this work? You know, and and that's, a, that's a problem. They're, they're out of touch with society. Philip Carter said that uh, marketing is based on information. The only thing you have that your competitor can't knock off is what's in your head and the people who work for you. They can knock off your systems. They can knock off your products. They can't be you. They can't know what you know. They, Microsoft is valuable because of who works there. Anyone can write software, but they got some really smart people writing software, and they pay them so they won't go somewhere else. And that's why they make money, and that's the way it works today in business. It's all about what you know. Now, this is the most important skill of all, and it's called emotional intelligence. Imagine I teach you how to drive, and people take driving lessons all the time, and you learn, and you're ready for your road test, and you failed. Not because you can't drive, because it was a test, and you got nervous. How many of you have had that experience where you knew what you needed to know, but it was a test that made you nervous, or your kids got nervous? What if there was a way to, to change the state, to get in a state you needed to be to succeed at whatever it is you wanted to do? And there is a way, and I'm going to teach it to you. But because you're moving a lot, watch your knees. You need to stand up. Watch your knees near the table. If you stand up for this one drill, I'm going to show you how to get energy. So if you're working late at night, you can't drink coffee, you want to go to bed after, you can wake up. You go to class after a, a day of work, you can wake up. If you're driving in traffic and you find yourself getting tired, you can wake up. Now, the left side of the brain controls what part of your body? Right and the right controls, left side. so if you take your left hand, touch your right shoulder, right hand, touch your left alternating, it's not just the Macarena without music, <laughs> it's, it's a brain massage. And if you do this to your opposite knee, like a Charleston, just touching your opposite knee, you have to think about it. Both sides of your brain are doing something. Raise your right hand and squeeze your right thumb and say this like you mean it, with conviction. I feel great! I feel great! Yes! Yes! I'm going to do three sets of these. And that was the best one I've had in over a month. I'm going to something with, I feel great. Like, no, 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 no. That's the point. You actually have to feel great for me to create a state 
You have to be in the state if you feel great. No, that isn't going to work. What you did was the right thing. So thank you. Finally, someone got it. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 that's hard. We're going to do this. Okay. But still feel great. Okay, we're going to do the shoulder taps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How do you feel? I feel great. great. Yes. A little faster. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How do you feel? I'm doing great. Yes. yes. Go as fast as you can. Now watch your knees. You ready? might want to do that while you're driving, though. No, no, no. You're right. Pull over. We'll Pull talk over. about that. Okay. okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How do you feel? I'm doing great. Yes. That's yes. a big hand. Now you can sit down. Feel great. Yeah. Do you know what happens when you do this three times? Nothing. <laughs> now, 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 you probably would like something. So let me show you how that works. Remember Pavlov? He rang a bell, he fed a dog, rang a bell, fed a dog, rang a bell, fed a dog, rang a bell, and the dog drove. You don't want to drove, but you do want to feel great. The latest studies show habits take 90 days, not 30 days to create. So you go slow, medium, fast every day, 30, 90 days, and now you're in a meeting, you know, or driving. You don't want to do this in a business meeting, you don't look a little straight, or in an exam. But you can grab your thumb and say, I feel great, yes, and your brain remembers the way you felt every time you did that, which is more awake and more alert. It wakes you up. In the same way, you can create relaxation, creativity for art. You can create focus, concentration, whatever state it is you need, you can do something to create the state, anchor it, and trigger it when you need it. So we can create emotional states that will help us be successful. And the question is, are you doing that? What states do you need in your business to be successful? And what states get in the way? And what are you doing to get rid of the bad states and create the good states? Very, very important. Most people didn't even think they could do it. But you can, please do it. The firemen do it, the military, they practice under very dangerous and very difficult conditions so that they're in a terrified state, the state they'll be in when someone's shooting at them or the building is burning. If they did it in a relaxed state, they wouldn't remember when they needed to use the information because the state you're in when you're learning is the state you need to be in when you're outputting the data. If you have a state change, which is what anxiety does in a test, you forget everything. You can't remember anything because your state is different. And that's what's triggering the problem, and you could change that. And you could use this to increase your productivity, focus on the stress, and learn good pe people skills are part of emotional intelligence. So you get better deals where you can communicate. People understand what you're telling them. They like what you're saying. You can create rapport instead of friction, and then you have a much better business relationship. Math, this is something most people dread. 38% uh, of high school seniors can't count, and I'm talking decimals and percentages. They're doing algebra and, six, and, and, and calculus at seventh grade in Europe, and our 12th graders can't do fractions and decimals. It's, it's pretty, I worked in a school for 10 years in the inner city in Brooklyn when I graduated college and 2% graduated. And I remember my job interview was teachers get killed here, do you want the job? And they did. And four teachers in 10 years were on stretches. One was in a coma. The kids knocked them unconscious with furniture. And that was a tough job. And they caught me helping kids learn. And they said I wasn't being paid to do that. It was not my job. They were it was a bio class, and they told me they couldn't do the homework because they didn't know where the answers were. So in the bio class, in the bio book that they used in bio class, I was showing them how to do the homework because they asked me. And the principal said, what are you doing? And I told them, I'm showing them how to do the homework in their book. They're having a problem. We don't pay you to do that. You're supposed to be teaching curriculum, and you're not. You're not working. And he wrote on my page that I was, he came in my room and I wasn't doing anything. Because I was teaching learning, which is a waste of their time. So I quit. That was, that's when I decided to quit. I stopped being a teacher and became an educator. I wasn't going to spend my life 
making kids dumber. So let me show you some math magic. Here's a problem, 103 times 107. How much bigger than 100 is 103? Right, right, right. How much bigger than 100? 107. Seven. Seven. Write it down next to the numbers. What's the, multiply the two differences. Three times seven is? How hard was that? Easy, that's the hard part. Now the easy part, add diagonally. 103 plus 7 is 100 and, right, and 107 plus 3 is 100 and, is it the same? Always. So whichever way you add that's easier, do it, it's the same answer. Write down 110 and 21. 103 times 107 is 11,021. How hard was that? That's speed math. And it's not hard to learn. Why would you want to learn it? Well, Imagine you're in a business like real estate or financial planning, and there are numbers. They're really important, and you crunch them that quickly in your head. What are the chances they want to work with you? If you watch the news, does anyone feel we have too many smart people making too many good decisions right now in the world? Okay, you actually find someone who can think and understand? Do you feel like that's someone you want to keep? It's an instant rapport buildup. This is someone who's intelligent, someone who understands my problems. I don't want to lose this person. This person is someone I need, and that's why you do it. It also makes it easy for you to check numbers, and also, I think it's fun. It's like a math trick. You can do some cool stuff. Now, I have a handout. I got one more skill. I, can I just go past you for a second? Sure. Thank you. while he's doing that, which is memory. Memory. I always remember that one. <laughs> People often ask me, do I remember what I read? And the answer is yes, I remember a lot. And I'm not only going to tell you what I do, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to give you 10 things to remember and not show you how. And then I'll show you how, and you'll remember all of them backwards and forwards with no effort. And initially, it's like, there's no way that's going to happen. Here are the 10 things I want you to remember. Pole, shoes, tricycle, car, glove, gun, dice, skate, cat, and bowling pins. Is it safe to say you don't remember all the things on the list right now? In three minutes, you'll know everything effortlessly. So I'm going to give you an exercise. And it's not just an exercise. It's a tool. So... Practice this with me because it's not just an exercise. It's something you can use at work and your youngsters can use for school. I started teaching this to my grandkids when they were three. And they learned it in three minutes, just like you're going to. The Greeks discovered thousands of years ago a shortcut for memory. They found if you take something you know already and relate it to something you want to know, it locks it in much quicker. How many of you can count to 10? I want to see every hand up. Good. <laughs> We're going to use the numbers from 1 to 10 and learn 10 things super fast. Starting with the number 1. It looks like a pole. Like this is a pole. It looks like a number 1. When I say 1, you say pole. Ready? 1. Pole. Excellent. 2. How many shoes are you wearing? Two. Two. What's 2? Two? Two. What's 1? Pole. Perfect. 3 is a tricycle. How many wheels are on a tricycle? Three. What's 3? Tricycle. What's two? two. What's one? Oh. Excellent. Four is a car. How many tires are on a car? Four. What's four? Car. Two. 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 One. Four. Three. Tricycle. We're jumping on purpose. We're not memorizing. We're associating. Different kind of learning skill. Five is a glove. How many fingers are in a glove? Five. What's five? five. What's five. three? Tricycle. What's one? Four. Perfect. Six gun. They love them in Texas. Six gun. What's six? Four. 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 Two. Jeez. Perfect. Seven is lucky in dice, right? So seven is? Dice. What was five? Clue? Glove. Three. Five. One. Four. Excellent. Rhymes work. Say eight skate. Eight. eight. What's eight? Six. What did I love in Texas? Six. Six. Four. Five. Two. 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 You're almost Two. done. You're getting smarter. How many lives does a cat have? Nine. What's nine? Cat, cat. Seven is lucky in? Nine. Five. Nine. Three. Nine. One. Four. Last number. 
How many bowling pins are in an alley? Ten. Ten, ten is ball. perfect. Let's do all ten numbers together. One, ball. two, Shoes. three, Tricycle. four, Car. five, Car. six, Car. seven. Dice. Eight rhymes with six. Six. nine. Cat. Cat. And what's ten? Bowling. And how does it make you feel? Great! great. It would yes. feel yes. great through that. Fast story. I was on the longest running show in history with one person. The Joe Franklin Show. 48 years, one person. There's been longer running shows, but not one person. And I was on the last three weeks. And I said, Joe, what's your secret? How did you manage to get on so many years longer than anyone in history? He smiled and he said, Sincerity. And when you can fake that, you can do anything. <laughs> I want you to know, nobody fakes sincerity for 48 years. It's impossible. There's no way you can be on every week, every day of every week for 48 years and fake it. People know when you care and when you care about yourself. So in business, sincerity is important. Always focus on them and their problem. And then they'll become a client and you'll make a good living, but you'll make it because you're solving their problems and not because you're just there for the sale. So that's called pegging. And I'll show you how to use this now, to learn numbers super fast for school and business. Let's say I want to measure the circle. I would need to use pi, 3.14. And nobody remembers it because it's a weird number. So we're going to make it into a picture. Three is a tricycle, one is a pole, and four is a car. Make a movie. A tricycle hits a pole on a car. Picture that. A tricycle hits a pole on a car. Tricycle, what number? Three. Hits a pole Five. on a car. Four. Now you never learn numbers. And you could use this for percentages, due dates. You could use this for any uh, product skew number you need to remember. You make the no and the zero is the 10 bowling pins. So now you have all the digits you need. You just string them together in a movie. And you play your movie back, you recall the number. It's much easier to have the images to come back than 3.14, which is more confusing. So that's a very easy way. Now, kids use it, learn science, math, um, history, anywhere there's numbers, they can use this to remember dates and, and important numbers. What are you doing in your business to make the things you tell people easy to remember? You, how many times has someone told you something you needed to do when you got home you didn't remember? And you didn't do it right, and you got angry. Well, that's what's happening when you tell people what they need to do. They don't remember. It isn't enough to tell people what they need to do. You also need to tell them how to remember what you told them so they can use what you told them when they need to do it. How much more rapport would that create? And repeat business and referrals. And we don't. It's not in any business books, but it's an easy problem to fix. And you could use this to learn names, Facts, numbers, even foreign languages. I have a whole set of tools just for that. You were asking about that. Now, I do have a program. I'm going to show you what I have. And I hope some of you will consider getting it. I have it with me. <clears throat> it's a learning system called Read, Write, uh, Memory, and Math. The reading program, we guarantee you'll go 100% faster in four hours. And I'm giving you two sets. I have DVDs with me, but I also give you online. So if you have kids grandkids, nieces, nephews, they don't live with you. They can go online and use it. So, and I want that. that I'm, one of the reasons I joined Rotary was to help with education. It's one of the four pillars. So if I could help, that's what I do. So my goal is to get it in as many hands as I can and make it as painless as possible to reach as many people and be able to make a living while I do that. I also will give you my cell phone. And if you text me, if you need help, I'll help you. And if your kids need help, I'll help them. I get very few questions, but if they have one, I'd rather answer it for a lot of reasons. One, I want them to learn it, and two, if they're having a problem, I want to know what confused them so I can fix it. And after 30 years, I don't get a lot of calls because I fixed it, and that's how you make something work. And then um, I have a writing program. It's on writer's block and how to eliminate it. So you can switch on your creative state and read people like a book. You ever felt you're on AM and they are on FM? You're right. And there's a way to know very quickly what their wavelength is. So when you're writing or talking to them, you're on their wavelength, not your wavelength, and you're building rapport, which creates more sales and creates more business and more referrals. And you get your writing done on time. I wrote a book in five hours. 
and it went number one on Amazon the next day, and I'll talk about that in a minute. The memory program, which I think is good for you, is for numbers, facts, details, even foreign languages, and it makes it really easy and more. I gave you a little of the math, because how would I explain that if I didn't show it to you? But it's all of math. It's addition, subtraction, multiplying, dividing, and squaring. Now, I speak at a lot of groups, like stay motivated and get motivated. I'm on a lot of big stages. And I charge you $188, but what I, and I, this is where I charge Rotary, so I would charge you the way I charge Rotary. $297 for everything, two sets, and, or two payments of $160. And if you need another payment plan, let me know. I want anyone not to get it because they, they need three payments, we'll make three payments. I really want to reach as many people as I can. And online, it's $4.97 just for that one set. But if you fill in your forms, I'm going to also give you my 12 advanced lessons as a gift. And that's another $247, an add-on, but I'm not charging. I don't, I, I don't have it on my website. So don't go to my website. It's not there. It has to be with me live. Or if they're watching, they call me at 214-952-9150. But it's not on my website. And this is increasing your speed. Now, four hours, I could double you. I'm sure of that. But I know that's not as fast as you could go. Give me an hour a month, and I can take you to a much higher level. So I have 12 lessons that I include, and then teach you how to focus in on different subjects, and how to concentrate and not get distracted and forget things. That's another thing. Awesome. I'll tell you what I did. This is a little secret. I don't talk about this a lot. When I got out of college, I got interested in consciousness. So I, I became a yogi. I lived in an ashram on weekends. I meditated, and I went on like a spiritual odyssey to try to find like the deeper meaning of life. And I learned a lot about the mind and what it could do. From what I learned about the physiology of the brain, I got a lot. But it wasn't the reason I got the 25,000 words a minute was I learned to focus. When I was on Cavuto, I had an earpiece. He was talking to Pelosi, Boehner, Cantor. Far more interesting than a healthcare bill. It was boring as crap. I mean, it's a legal uh, brief that's 1,500 pages long. And it's as exciting as it sounds. It's like reading the New York yellow pages, okay? It's that exciting. Actually, the white pages, it would be worse than the yellow. At least the yellow has ads. This had no ads. And I read it in 50 minutes. So I'm reading it, and I have to tune out everything they're saying. Because if I'm listening to them, I can't learn the bill. But when he says, Howard, I have to snap out of it, stop, and talk to him immediately. So I was able to do that because I meditated for 90 minutes before I went on the set. So I was in alpha theta state. I was really, really in my zone, like a, like a professional sports person. They're screaming in the stadium is invisible to them. They're focusing on what they need to do or they can't do it. And you can learn that. So that's part of what I teach. And there are 12 lessons, and they're free for you, 247 for everyone else. I have a program on how to write a book in a day. And it's not just a book. It's a DVD, a webinar, a CD, audio, video, and a book, all at the same time, simultaneously. And why would you want to do that? Because you want to be the realtor everybody goes to. Why you? There's a lot of realtors out there. There's a lot of uh, financial planners out there. What makes you special? Your book. Right. And so you don't sell the book. You give it away on your squeeze page. It's a free gift. And they give you their information. And then you do webinars with them, and you create a relationship. They're not ready to spend on a house the first minute. They're not ready to spend on a big ticket item, but give them time to get to know, like, and trust you, and they'll like you, and that you start off with the free book. It's at the bottom of an ascension ladder that goes up as they get more comfortable with what you do. And that's how you do it. And here's a little trick. I know a lot of you have lists in your business. There's a way to explode the list. Facebook has ads. If you take the list you have and upload it, there's a spot on Facebook ads you can do this. It knows all those people from their emails. They're on Facebook. It knows who they are. It knows what they like. It knows what groups they join. It knows what age they are. It knows everything. It's their fingerprint. Now you can put an ad on Facebook and say, find the other people in the world like those people that are buying my stuff that I don't know yet and let them see my ad 
to get them to come to me and give them your free book or whatever it is. And you can explode your list that way very quickly. And then I have an entrepreneurial program. I read fast. I read 10 books in three hours. I learned Photoshop in three hours and then train photographers on how to use Photoshop. It's funny, funny, you have time? Sure. I, I wanted to go on a cruise. My wife wanted to go to Hawaii, and I lecture on cruise ships. And um, they didn't want speed reading, which was a bummer, because that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> and they said, but we have uh, a slot for a person to teach photography, video, and Photoshop. And I said, oh, I teach that too. I didn't know what, I never, I didn't have a video camera. I never, never, never took a course in photography. And I didn't know what Photoshop was. And the cruise was in 10 days. And they said, well, if you, if you can do that, we'll get your book. But I want you to know if you don't do it correctly, they'll throw you off the boat. Not in the water, but on the shore. And they, we saw someone get thrown off the ship that didn't do what they were supposed to. So we go in there, and I'm like, please go. I read, I read 10 books on Photoshop in, 10, in three hours, and then 10 books on video in three hours, and then 10 books on uh, photography in three hours. Tell them we're busy. And uh, <laughs> Kevin Spacey did that at a, at, a, at a Broadway show. I thought it was the coolest thing. So I use that now. I thought it was a great line. So anyway, um, I get in, I'm like, please, God, let them be 900 years old. You know when you go on a cruise, they have the, the wheelchair with the bottle and the, the tube, and come in my room and say, what, what's digital photography? That was my, my perfect prospect. The first guy walks in the room with a $5,000 Nikon with a $7,000 telephoto lens. I got a $90 camera in my pocket. And I'm looking at it. He says, I'm a photographer for 38 years. I signed up to learn photography from you. I'm like, okay. And then the next guy comes in. I've been doing Photoshop for five years. I hear you're an expert. I signed up to learn about Photoshop. <laughs> and my wife's sitting where you are. She's crying because she thought we were going to get thrown off the boat. <laughs> And for a week, I taught these people photography, video, and Photoshop. And at the end of the week, I said, how many years have you been studying? And I could say I learned it last week, but I did. I learned it in three hours. And now what I do is I make a video on what I learned so you can learn it in one hour. Because 90% of what you're going to do, you can learn in an hour. The rest of it, go on Fiverr and hire someone. You don't sure. want to spend any more time on it. But the, how to do a website in an hour, how to do a membership site, which is different than a website, how to do Photoshop, how to use publication, right? And every month you'll get a free video. And I'm not charging for that. That's another gift for this group. It's one payment of 297 or two or 160. We give you total guarantee. My cell phone. And one last thing, would you like it for free? Anyone? Yeah. yeah. Did you learn something you could use today? Yeah. You know anyone else who needs to know any of this? Someone with a youngster in school, with a business, an, old, an older person who doesn't, who wants to stay mentally fit? Yeah. It's all on video. And what I did is I made these videos. As a spe you know how affiliate redirects work. When you sign up, you have a chance to sign up for free to be a, re a referral partner. You have a link. You send people to watch the video. If they just watch it like you did, they say, that was fun. I learned something. But if they buy it, and a lot of them will because it's a good program, you get a third. So if three of your referrals convert, yours doesn't cost anything. And I'll pay you for any additional ones as a, as a, uh, as a bonus. And if you have a list, I will do a webinar with you. I'll go on your list with you. We'll do a live webinar and pay for it that way. I mean, it's only two ninety seven. I can't imagine you can't sell one program to your list. So if this is something you're interested in, fill in the form. I'll give you the programs, you can take them home, and we'll join my learning family. I'm trying to help. By the way, the people you sell to, they can do the same thing and refer three people. So you're not taking advantage. I'm trying to go viral sure. and reach people. Money's a problem today for a lot of people, so I want to make sure that doesn't stop anyone from doing this because I want to make it so easy for you to get your money back by working with you and helping you and there's so much you can do in your business with this. What you're learning is how people learn. So when you write copy, how to make copy that's easy to understand and targets people correctly. So it's not just the input, it's what you do with it later to build rapport in your businesses. So if you see the value to that, fill out the form before you leave. I'll give you a set and an online set. You get two sets and all the bonuses. And if you'd like to be on my TV show, make sure you let me know. If you'd like to speak for Rotary, that, there's no strings on that. That's just something I do to help people. Thank you for having me. I hope Great. you enjoyed it. All right, guys. That was absolutely
absolutely awesome, and I'm very excited, and I'm going to, yeah, I mean, I, I got to tell you, that that was better than I imagined, so I really. He's from Brooklyn, yeah. what do you expect? Oh, okay. <laughs> we got a little hometown bias here, but anyway, not being from Brooklyn, I still think it was awesome, and uh, I really appreciate everybody's in, indulgence. I, I, I let Howard go a little longer because I was into it, so I hope nobody's uh, panicked to run out of here, and I hope everybody considers looking at what he's got. I think that, that uh, I, I'm intrigued, but that being said, hopefully, I mean, this all this will be out on Facebook Live, so you'll be able to refresh anything that you missed if you didn't take good notes, um, you know, but I want to learn how to write a book, and how, how many, how long can I write a book in? I think one day. I okay, I have a dream hours. to write a book, so that I'm going to. Oh, it's very I'm, easy. I'm going to, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do it for that reason alone, can I, because, can I ask a quick yes, sure. Uh -huh. is, I'm just going to put out there what a lot of other people may be thinking, because in, in our world we are so busy, I can see how this will collapse time frames once we learn it, but how long does it actually take us to go Perfect. through these yeah. lessons? Good, good how I, long I does it take to go like through this, it, right? And then it on my shelf Start and reading, four hours, just once, four hours, and you double. You might go quicker, but most people double. It's two to four, majority of two, and that's four hours. Or now, the DVD on the reading? It's the DVD or online, whichever okay. way you prefer to learn it. Same program, it's just online. Right. It's no different. Four hours. The rest of it, do it at your leisure. Because you're still going to have access. To it. Do it when it's what's important to you. Now, just so you know, I do a lot of webinars. And once you're on my list, they're free. And, and I do like I'm doing here. You know, I give a good lesson. They enjoy it. If they want me to work with them and help them and take them to another level, that's an option. But I do a lot of webinars. And you'll be on my list, and I'll keep in touch with you. And that's why I wanted you on my newsletter, so I could keep in touch with you and let you know when I'm doing something like this. And ask it what Great. And you have access. You have my phone number. And I will help you. I, I, my goal is to help people. It's about those kids and people that have helped. The lady was 84 years old. That makes me, that really makes me feel like I'm here for something. Mm -hmm. My life matters. I'm 67. Wow. And, uh... I just started a new company because I like what I do. I enjoy working with people and I like helping people. I got beat up so much. Um, I don't like the world that I grew up in and I'm seeing a lot of that today coming back. And yeah. I'm doing, I believe people who are more better read, understand more, communicate better, leaders will make make a better world yeah. ultimately. Yeah. And I and I and I agree and I think that you know and and really we're going to we're going to we're going to close it out on the Facebook live here and thank you for participating. We went a little longer than the 30 minutes but I thank think you. it was well worth the time.